Welcome to another Hero Update training video. This one is on the Hero version 4.1 update, released 3rd of July 2024. The main updates to this release around the introduction of the new Wurzlink window library that will replace the old custom window library, some NATO's climate zone postcode changes, some minor changes to air conditioning in Holla Home, a new offset drawing mode option, a Hero 101 training file comparer, and several other minor changes. We'll begin with the window library changes. So with Hero version 4.1, we've integrated AGWA, the Australian Glass and Window Association's new WERSLINK database into the tool. So not only does this WERSLINK integration come with the latest update to the custom window library, which now stands at around 47,000 custom windows from suppliers across Australia and the world, which is a substantial increase since the last update. I think it's been more than a year or two since we've been given a window library update. It also comes with a large new library of defaults, or what is called the new WERSLINK defaults, as opposed to the original NATO's default window specifications. So we have 1,300 of those too, which is great, uh, but requires some explanation. So importantly, the WERSLINK integration in Hero is a live API-driven service, meaning that window updates will now be more frequent and won't require you to install a new version of Hero just to get the latest window library. The WERSLINK library in Hero will sync automatically every month and update itself on your machine. So obviously you do need to be signed in and online for that to occur. So as time progresses, we'll see new windows added. We'll see windows retired as manufacturers stop using them. We may see versions of the same window updated as testing or techniques change. So they'll get updated too. So it's all a great improvement in data management that this API allows us. So you can turn on this version column in the window library to see what version of window specification you're now using. And there's also a new active column that will show you green for active, gray for retired. So retired windows will only ever be shown in the selected window table in the bottom, just for historic projects, never in the current library above. But there's not a lot to it aside from all these new window specification. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, but you'll just notice all these new window specifications for use in your projects. But there is then some complexity in how old projects can transition into the new scheme, migrating the new into the new library, and also how to use these new WERSLINK defaults. So I'll discuss those two. So into the WERSLINK aspects. So if you start a new project, you'll automatically be using the new WERSLINK library. You'll see this use WERSLINK toggle, toggle button is on. It's locked to on. You can't turn it off for new projects. And you'll be seeing all these new windows so looking through here, we have this new manufacturer, WERSLINK default, and that holds this new default library that I mentioned, these 1,300 new default options, as opposed to the original NATO's defaults. Let's have a look at these. So these are interesting because they're not like the old defaults where we had, say, a single specification for a single timber double glazed clear window or a single thermally broken aluminium double glazed tint window which was okay, but they were quite limiting in terms of only being one per type. I think originally they were meant to represent a roughly 75 percentile worst case performance of that category. So they were like a reasonable worst case for that category, but it didn't really provide flexible options for staying inside this default or generic category while still being able to push into higher performance ratings. But these new WERSLINK defaults are firstly more categorized. so the first thing you may notice, we have now a default per opening style. So you have defaults per awning types, per bifold types, casement types, slides, sliding types. It's not the old type A or type B style openings. So you do need to start selecting a WERSLINK default that matches your opening style. There's also an apartment set of defaults. This is a housing set of defaults. My understanding is that these aren't fixed requirements. You don't need to be using one or the other for, say, class two apartments. They just represent for, say, the apartment categories, a more typical apartment window specification, usually a slightly different configuration, window frame areas, etc. So that's the main difference, but we've been advised this isn't a strict categorization. You can use these across any project type. Secondly, you'll see even in each category of opening style, like this one here, we don't have a single specification. We have a large range of specs that represent different performance outcomes. 
So we have a lot of different U-value and SHGC combinations per window type. So this really allows you to fine-tune your project, dial in the most appropriate specification, with the caveat, I suppose, of ensuring that there are windows available from your client's preferred manufacturers that can meet this. So just keep that in mind. So I think these are the main differences here to the old defaults. They are somewhat more tricky to understand and apply into a model, but the objective from the administrator and AgWiz perspective is that they allow you to stay within this generic or default category of windows on your certificate, where your builder or client can then use any manufacturer based on just achieving a better or equivalent performance for those windows, but importantly, without limiting the performance levels of your home. So we can hopefully achieve higher ratings now, dialed in ratings that are appropriate for 7-star and these types of projects while still remaining flexible in being defaults that any manufacturer might be able to target and supply to. In terms of how to start using these new defaults, what we think is that you may want to start exploring different workflows of perhaps starting with the old generics, the old defaults as an entry point, seeing where your project gets to with those, and then refining your project using these new WERS-linked defaults and then starting to optimise beyond those somewhat worst-case performance cases for your project. As mentioned, you do want to make sure your client can feasibly be supplied with meeting those specs. So I think having a list of preferred manufacturers from your client per project is also something we need to consider and then checking against that too. So into the WERSLink transition aspects. Firstly, Natas 2019 projects unfortunately can't use any of these new WERSLink windows. 2019 jobs require Chenna 3.21. You'll have to stay on the old library for those jobs and for those, for those states that aren't on NCC 2022 yet. Next, your old NATOS 2022 projects from previous Hero versions, version 4 and earlier, they'll load in, but they won't be on the new WERSLINK library yet. For those old projects you load, if it's a 2019 job, this WERSLINK toggle will just remain off. You won't be able to turn it on. It's disabled, as I mentioned. But for 2022 jobs started in version 4 or earlier, you'll see the WERSLINK toggle button here is off, but you can turn it on. And you can just turn this on to start using WERSLINK. It'll tell you about the transition of your existing window specs in your project. So we'll attempt to match up your old window codes into the new window codes of WERSLINK, which are a bit different, and we'll tell you about what we're about to transition your job to. There may be situations where codes have retired such that there's no match anymore. And in these cases, again, we'll notify you these are going to just get reset back to the default aluminium 00101. So you just hit OK. We'll change all of your project windows over. And now when you hit run simulation, we'll now be using the new WERSLINK library for Chenna. There's a few other WERSLINK related buttons added into the window library. Firstly, you'll see the date of the current WERSLINK window library in use in your interface. You can click this sync button if you're connected to the web and just check that you're running the latest library. It'll download and update it if it's not. Though we also do this automatically on launch and startup if you're signed in. So you probably won't need to use this up, uh, sync button too much perhaps except just to validate that you're on the most recent. And down here in the selected window area, there is an update button that you can use in the future where you check whether any of your windows have retired or changed. So as months go by and the library updates, you hit this update button. And again, similar to transitioning from the old window library to the WERSLINK, if your WERSLINK windows have retired from say a version one to version two, you can leave it as is if you've had substantial project on that project already, and there might be changes to the U-value SHGC that may affect your rating. So a lot of the time these changes will be minor. Or you can hit this update button. It'll transition all your retired windows in your project from say the version one spec to the version two spec. So it'll likely be a few months before that window becomes relevant. But if you notice a retired window in your job, you can just use this update button quickly update to the latest. We've also taken the opportunity to remedy a few elements of the window library view inside Hero. So you see it's had a slight redesign and update, more visually clear and in line with our new styles. Still with the complete library on top, you selected window list on the bottom, available for use in your project, and the filter and search options on the left. One new button you'll see in the filter section is this search compliant. And that's just a way to enter in a Windows U value and SHGC. And then all the windows that are an acceptable Natters Tech Notes substitution of that specification will then be shown. So you see the filter sliders will just adjust to ensure that all windows shown are under the specified U value and plus or minus 5% SHGC of the entered value, which would represent an acceptable substitution. 
There are a range of new filter options that the improved data fidelity of the Wurzlink library gives us, such as these new opening styles. So there's new options like hinge doors, curtain walls, several others added. The glass value columns listed in the window library are a lot more useful, give you a true detail of what the U value and SHGC are based on, such as this example here. It used to be very hard to understand the glass type used in the window specs previously, and now they're a lot more clear. The window list button down the bottom here was a bit confusing previously. We've redesigned that to make it a bit more useful and easy to understand. It just follows a similar pattern to the Holo Home appliance templates. You can just save your selected window list to a file, load back those files quickly too, along with a bunch of defaults we've added for your benefit. It's also worth noting that in version 4.1, your list of selected windows is now saved on a per project basis rather than globally, meaning that the windows you select per project get saved and loaded each time, cleared and changed from the previous project when you load in that new one. Version 4.1 also includes a range of minor changes that I'll now go through briefly. Firstly, from a regulatory perspective, we have some NATO's climate zone changes for several New South Wales postcodes centred around the Tamworth region. So these postcodes, they can now use an additional climate zone 48 as an alternative where the local climate conditions are better represented. So that's been approved by both NATO's and BASICs, though you'd still need to justify this in your certificates notes section. It's worth noting that your default NATUS profile in version 4.1 for new projects is now NATUS 2022, not NATUS 2019 anymore, as the majority of projects in Australia now will be taking place under that profile. Just be aware of that. Make sure you're getting that right. You don't want to go through a project and then realise that you've been using the wrong profile from the outset, please. Inside the appliances section for Holo Home, or air conditioners and you'll now see the efficiency alongside the star rating. So when you select an air conditioner now, you'll also see alongside the star rating the heating seasonal performance factor and the total cooling seasonal performance factor for the Zerl types. And for the older Earl rating types, you'll see the annual coefficients of performance and annual energy efficiency ratio, EER, for heating and cooling respectively. And these new values are useful so that if your air conditioner doesn't have a star rating, such as some ducted or old systems or multi-head systems, still the case for many systems still, you'll still be able to find these efficiency values within the CSV export downloadable from the energyrating.gov.au website and can specify it in your ratings. One of the last minor changes is for some drawing modes is a new offset drawing mode option. So particularly useful for splitting ceilings or floors where new regulations like Australian standards and referenced in the NCC and tech notes is this requirement to ensure sufficient clearance in ceiling insulation to the roof line and rafters. And so typically this will be dealt with by using a thinner ceiling bat around the perimeter, such as R3 is the default the NATO's tech notes require you, so as to ensure ventilation, clearance, and for moisture protection. So to help with this, it's this new ability to turn a offset option on, so that when you're drawing a split line, for example, you can turn on offsets, set the offset in millimeters, and when you're drawing your split, you'll see it's now offset from wherever your mouse pointer is or where your line should be. If you're drawing counterclockwise, you can click this flip button to reflect the line as well. Let me show you how quickly it is to split a dwelling around the perimeter to add these thinner edge back insulations. So we'll enter split drawing mode. We're splitting only ceilings. We'll turn on this offset option, set the offset to 450 mil, which is close to a standard 430 mil bat and is what the tech notes ask you to do if it's not shown on the documentation. And as always, we have to start just inside from a wall, otherwise it'll be a wall split. And then we just trace around the perimeter. And we end up back where we started. Hey presto, we can now select all of these new split areas, change their ceiling insulation to the tech note default of R3. It's just a demonstration. If you know this project from the Hero 101 course, you'll know it's a Skillion roofline, so this north edge actually wouldn't need these edge bats. The roofline's going up in that direction. There's no way there's going to be compression of bats there. But anyway, you get the point of how this function works. 
this feature is also added into the Eve and screen drawing modes too. So if you'd like to set an Eve offset, uh, you can use that too. Usually you'd have to use the background snap points to pick up the outside of the wall and you might enter a 600 mil Eve or whatever and quickly do that if you don't have say an Eve line shown on your drawings. As usual, we continue to make sure the inf interface remembers more of your settings. So for version 4, we started saving the summary view column settings into your project. In version 4.1, as I've mentioned, we saved the selected window list. But we're now also saving into your project file the current visual styles that you've got per project, the state of the window view, all the columns and filters that you've used. There's a setting too where you can turn off this feature and just keep it a global. We Hero would just remember the global settings rather than a per project. Okay, some more trivial updates I'll run through quickly. There's some new shortcuts to the Chenna simulation folder and the Hero installation folder available from the file menu. The help menu has a range of live, always up to date resource links, such as links to the NCCs, Natas tech notes, and these kind of things. So you can quickly bring up those for reference. After every simulation, we've been producing a CSV results file at the moment, and you'll notice that CSV results file now has its file name has the rating and heating cooling loads, which is a quick look up uh, analyzing previous runs. We've amended the alpha floor floor assembly name that we added in version four. It's now just named lightweight concrete subfloor instead of the branded name. And as usual, we've also fixed uh, more than a dozen or so issues and bugs, which you can see in the full change log available from the help menu or the release newsletter. Lastly, for those doing the Hero 101 training course, we've added a nifty little training file comparer. So now you can compare your training project that you've done against our reference project inside the interface and get instant quick feedback on that rather than wait for us to do the same manual review. So it's not 100% perfect in terms of covering everything. We'll still likely detect some issues in your files in our manual reviews, I'm sure. But if you match up the zones correctly here, you'll then see all of the differences between our reference project and yours. And then you can really make sure that you're understanding Hero perfectly and the model perfectly before submitting to us for training approval. So I hope all the students out there appreciate that one to make the training side of things more seamless, give you really quick response times, allow you to really understand where you're going wrong rather than waiting for us. All right, that's it from me. Thanks so much for checking in. We hope you enjoy the latest update of Hero. We look forward to seeing you on the next update release. As usual, reach out to us if you're in need of any assistance in making the transition to Hero. We're here to support all of our customers, old and new, so get in contact via our webpage, support desk, social media, or email. Cheers and happy modelling.